money and the ministry that Jancy and uh, Pastor is doing there. I'm so excited I could meet their son uh, two days back and that family. I'm happy to be with my sister. Now there are some people whom you like to be with forever and it doesn't matter how many days you spend, every day is better than the previous day. So I love that family and I thank God for them. And I love the family of OCT, OSAC Christian Tabernacle. Because God has a plan in your life. We heard something this morning that God has for you this morning. We think why things are not happening. I have been praying, fasting. And I've been waiting for the Lord and things are going the same. No, things are not going to be the same. Hallelujah. My Jesus is alive. Amen. And the Spirit of God is moving. Hallelujah. And it's moving here today. I believe in Holy Spirit. And I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were four Gospels written by four people. And I'm sure... Many people in this world do not read that gospel, but they read George and all of us sitting here. Gospel of our life, open book. Let us be a challenge in this community that somebody seeing our life will be touched by the love of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Have we been able to touch someone in this year by the love of God? Have I made an impact on someone this year. You know, any drug you take, any product you take, it will be written, the active ingredient. Means it will have a lot of junk in it, bases in it, and some other things. But there is something called the active ingredient. I want to challenge you this morning, who is the active ingredient in this church? Amen. Hallelujah. We don't want 100% inactive ingredients. Because then the, then the church will be useless. We want the church to have at least 10% active in Gideon. That's enough. Hallelujah. The rest 90% will be changed by this 10%. God is looking for that today. And let me tell you the book, Acts of the Apostles, is not actually the Acts of the Apostles. It is the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we want to have a new book written in Osaks, West Plains, called the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Are you ready for that this morning? Amen. That's what we were listening all this while. Why things are not happening to me? Why things are not happening around? It's because you and I are not allowing the act of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Are we ready this morning Amen. for that? A fresh anointing. Something new which you have never seen. Don't frame God and put it in a fixed manner. Be ready to receive something which you have never seen before. I am ready for that this morning. Hallelujah. Shall we look into some verses? Uh, you know when the angel appeared to Mary and said that you are going to have a child. And she said that is something impossible because uh, I have never seen a man. So the angel gives the answer for the impossibility how it becomes possible. That is in Luke's Gospel. You can look into, uh, turn with me to Luke's Gospel. And there you will find in chapter 1 verse 35. How does impossible become possible? How does your limitations go and become unlimited? From today onwards you are not going to be limited. Each of you are called what? The unlimited. Hallelujah. Are we the unlimited or are we the limited? We are restrained by our thinking. God is going to make you unlimited. You know, I was so excited when I heard this pastor is coming here. Something told me I, I'm going to have a good time of a fellowship with him. And I'm happy I'm worshiping with you all and with Pastor Sam. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How does it happen? Luke chapter 1 verse 35. Can somebody read that for me quickly, please? And the angel answered and said to her, Yes. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the, power of the, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. This morning worship is for the overshadowing of the power of the highest. Amen. We have not come here to listen to a human being. We have not come here to see each other. We have come here to receive the power of the Almighty. Hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Almighty will overshadow you. 
Hallelujah. When it overshadows you, let me tell you, nobody will see you. Because the power has already overshadowed you. Most of us people are seen outside. The rough edges are bulging out. Because there is no overshadowing, no covering of it. Once it overshadows, nobody is going to see you. Hallelujah. That's the experience that God wants. See, one day Solomon came early into the temple which he built. And he thought he'll just sit and pray before the worship time. There are people who come before the worship time. I thank God for such people. And Solomon was one of them. He was a king, but he managed to reach there before anyone came. And he came and sat there and prayed. And the cloud just descended. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What happened? The ministers and the priests and the worshippers came after that. They couldn't enter. Amen. Hallelujah. You believe that the shadow comes with Sarah. No. Shadow is going to come before that. Everybody is waiting for George and Pastor George and Sarah to come. And if they are not there, you feel everything is over. No. That period is going to be over. Any simple person who is going to come and sit and pray, it's a work of the Holy Spirit. You are not one person dependent. You are dependent on the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Why are you looking at each other? You come here, sit and pray. And you ask God to overshadow you. I am asking God this morning to overshadow me. Hallelujah. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. We don't like that because once it is overshadowed, who is going to see us? We want our photograph. We want our name. Not too much of overshadowing. God wants you to shadow Him. Are you ready to shadow Him? Amen. Be behind, second fiddle to the Holy Spirit. Say, Lord, I surrender my life this morning to you. I know I can do nothing. I'm a big zero. But God do something for me. You know, how did the greatest miracle in the world ever happen? The birth of Jesus Christ. That happened by the power of the Almighty. And I believe some miracle is going to happen this morning. Amen. Have you come just to hear a sermon or receive a miracle? Amen. Do you believe today is the day of your miracle? Amen. Where the power of the Most High is going to overshadow you? Amen. Receive it! Woo! Receive it! Amen. Not what you had yesterday. Some of you say, okay, okay, I have been baptized with the Spirit of God. I know what is the power. No, 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 no. His mercy is new every morning. Amen. There's something which you have never experienced, which you are going to experience this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you ready for more? Shall we go forward? Psalms 51 verse 11. Quickly read with me. We have so much to read together. Psalm 51 verse 11. Hallelujah. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not cast me away from your presence. And do not take your Holy Spirit from this me. This is a beautiful prayer the psalmist is making. Two things. Lord, I want to remain in your shadow. Don't cast me away from your presence. This is not Sunday morning meeting, but every day of your life. Why do you need Holy Spirit to give a sermon? No. You need Holy Spirit to drive your car properly. You need Holy Spirit how to speak to your children properly. You need Holy Spirit to even cook in the kitchen properly. If you start cooking with the Spirit of God in you, diseases will be less. Medicines will be less. Every time operating in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, thinking in the Spirit, always moving into the supernatural and remaining there. Don't come down. Don't allow yourself to come down to the natural. Remain in the supernatural. It's not easy. Somehow we come down immediately. Some of the people are so carnal that they want to remain in the natural. But God wants to take this church to the next, next level. From the natural to the supernatural. Where things happen automatically. In the supernatural, you are the light of the world. You travel immediately. I know that I am going to be in the cabinet, cabinet of Christ. And one morning he will say, we are all meeting today. From miles together, the ministers will come immediately. 
And when Jesus will stand there and say, wow, I have something special this morning to talk to you. And we listen to it. And he will say, let's go. And he's on the chariot and he's flying. And I'm flying with him. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am in the supernatural. You are still in the natural. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. I am serving the almighty God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Two prayers that you need to pray with me this morning. Don't take your presence from me. Yeah. And take not the Holy Spirit from me. Oh, yeah. Lord, give me more this morning. I want to be drunk in the Spirit. Amen. All I need is your Spirit. The same Spirit which came on the church of Antioch. In Acts chapter 11, he's going to come on the church of Osak. As we just heard, we need only a few grams to make this whole nation alive. He is looking for that active ingredient this morning. Oh, Who is here ready Amen. to receive that power? Hallelujah. I don't think you have understood all what I'm talking. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know how to express it. I'll put it in easier terms. Can you catch the great waterfall we have in Canada? Niagara. What is that called? Niagara. Niagara. So that means you know Niagara. Can you catch Niagara in a glass? No. Now you understood? The Holy Spirit, you want to have it in yourself? Don't be with a glass. <laughs> Expand yourself to that extent that you can contain the power of the resurrection this morning. That you are going to be transformed from the natural to the supernatural. That God is going to use you in a manner that you have never Amen. seen before. Hallelujah. Say, I am ready, Lord. Amen. Don't get discouraged with, with small things that happen. And we don't be satisfied with small victories that he has given you. He has more for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go forward. Isaiah 63 verse 11. Isaiah 63 verse 11. Quickly for me please. And his, desire, his people recall the days of old. Yeah. The days of Moses and his people. Where, yes. Where is he who brought them through the sea? Yes. With the shepherd of his flock. Ah. Where is he who set his Holy Spirit among them? He had already put the Holy Spirit among the people of the old. At Moses, David, Abraham, all had Holy Spirit. But what happened to the new church? They had David and Saul and all had Holy Spirit coming and going. Right. In the New Testament church, it's going to remain in you. That means after Sunday service, you are not going to leave the Holy Spirit here. You're going to take it back. Some of us come these days in the church to have some tamasha happening and see all that and go. It is not anything spectacular here. It is something spectacular within. Right. Yeah, Ooh, I wish you could understand what is the working of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Even when you work in the farm, the Spirit of God will come down into you. Even when you walk in the road, the Spirit of God will come with you. And I can tell you, when you get into the aeroplane, the demon will fly. Yeah. Somebody possessed comes into the plane. It may be the air hostess or a pilot or even the passenger. They'll say, Oh, man of God, we can't stay in this place. Yeah. Right. Now everybody is comfortable with each other. Right. God wants to change that situation. Amen. Hallelujah. Because these are last days that he is pouring out his spirit on people. And he wants to pour it here. Amen. Are we ready Hallelujah. to receive that immeasurable gift that God has for you? You ask for more and more and more. That is the only thing which is going to give you more and more and more and more and more. And he will never stop giving you. If on the day of Pentecost, the early church experienced it. Ten time church is going to experience it in thousand time measure. Hallelujah. 
if Elijah was transported with Pisa and without flight, I am sure George Kobur will be transported one day without Pisa and aeroplane. I believe in God's word and I believe in the same spirit working in the same manner. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Once you are filled with the power of the spirit and once you stay, come into the spirit of uh, the realm of divinity and what God has for you, then the things will become very small. The local things are not very important. You have a back pain, don't worry. You have a neck pain, you are not afraid. Your child is not having some problem, you are not worried. Because you know the God who created heaven and earth. Yes. These small things are not going to disturb your mind. Now Satan is putting small issues and trying to trouble you and take away your joy, your peace. And you are always thinking why this is happening one after the other. But God is going to make you go over it. There was a point when Peter was under the wave, when the storm was standing above him. Few seconds later, when the power of God fell on him, and in faith, he started standing on the waves. God wants you not to be under the wave, but riding over the wave. Spiritual surfers, spiritual walk people who are going to walk over the storm. And no situation can ever drown you, because he will lift the standard of the spirit that is working in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. After hearing this, I know that you are ready to realize how God is going to put that in you this morning. The spirit of God. That is all I need. We sang this morning, more than the breath I take, more than the next heartbeat. Amen. Spirit, I need you more than that. I want to give you a test. Can you hold your breath and sit for two minutes? No. If you cannot, you cannot live without the Spirit of God. You cannot live without the experience of the Holy Spirit. We are not talking theology. We are talking the work of the Holy Spirit. The era of theology is over. The end times, it is the ministry by fire. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Are you ready for that this morning? Amen. God is challenging some of you to be an active ingredient in this place. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 1 verse 18. Matthew chapter 1 verse 18. We read how Jesus was born. You know many Christians have the mistake that Jesus came 2000 years back and he was not existing before. He existed even before. He is from the beginning of the earth. Jesus came into this world in 2000 years back but Jesus existed before the foundation of the earth Amen. so we are not celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ we are actually celebrating the entry of Christ into the world so don't get mistaken by thinking that Jesus just came 2000 years back and he was not there before he was there from the beginning hallelujah Amen. the most difficult thing was to take you to heaven is easier than God coming as a man that was very difficult there are very many reasons for it and uh, one of the interesting thing in the Bible I taught in our church God had never experienced death because God cannot die when God created man and he sinned he realized that man is going to experience death then the only way that God also could taste was death was by coming as a man and Jesus tasted death sin and uh, not sin sickness and all the trouble other than sin so when you say I have a back pain God exactly knows back pain somebody who is living in all good conditions without any famine without any difficulty and you tell them we are having no food that person will say please take some cho uh, chocolate and some pancakes and some sodas in my fridge and enjoy yourself. They don't understand the meaning of having bread. Yeah. Yeah. But here is a God who understands the meaning of a back pain. Yeah. Here is a God who understands what headache is. He knows what rejection is. He knows when friend, friends leave you. So any situation when you pray to Jesus, he knows exactly what is happening. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has tasted sickness. He's tasted pain. He tasted suffering. 
and he tasted death. Yes. But he came out victorious after all these things. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let's come to this point which I wanted to tell you. Matthew 1.18. Shall we read Matthew 1.18? Please quickly. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came out. Yes. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. Yes. But before they came together, she found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit was the one who created the child. So father of Jesus Christ is not Joseph. This is the mistake that a lot of the Christian churches have. They have their Holy Trinity as Father, Son, and uh, this thing. Mother Mary, Joseph, and Jesus Christ. No! The Holy Trinity is the Holy Spirit, Father, and the Son, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so Father of Jesus is what? The Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is the one who gave birth to Jesus. Now, you will not understand these techniques. It's very difficult. I will make it very easy for you. See, that means the blood of Jesus is not AB positive, not O positive. If that was the thing, the sacrifice on the cross would have been a human sacrifice. And the blood would have been a human blood. See, my son's blood or my daughter's blood is a mixture of me and my wife. Praise the Lord. So it is the Holy Spirit that made Jesus in the womb of Mary. Then, initially when I had the revelation, I thought, Holy Spirit came and picked up one of Mary's egg and impregnated it and then made Jesus. That was my early thought. What God revealed to me about a couple of years back, no, no, no. When, when artificial, what do you call? No, 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 no. When surrogacy. Uh, uh, surrogacy started happening, where already formed ovum was started, placed in the boom then I realized that Mary had only rendered her womb had no role in that whole creation it was the spirit itself implanted Jesus in the womb of Mary that is where you have to receive the grace mystery of the kingdom of God boom. that means the blood of Jesus is a divine blood that means the death of Jesus was the death of God had himself on the cross. He tasted it. The resurrection becomes meaningful in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. The, are you ready? What God has prepared for you Amen. before the foundation of the earth? Amen. Many of us are so mistaken by the church and by the teaching that is happening around. Hallelujah. It is the spirit of God that put the child. Can we read that portion? Just two more, two more verses there. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man. Yeah, verse 20. Did not want to expose her to public disgrace. Yeah. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. Yes, that, that is the spirit of God that put Jesus in Mary. That was the message for the, uh, Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. Why did Jesus come? For many reasons he came. One of us was to die on the cross of Calvary and to get us redemption. Second thing, to conquer death and sin. And very important thing why he came, Matthew 3.11, which we forget very often. I baptize you with the water for repentance. John says, I baptize you in the water for the repentance. But after me will, but come, after me will come one who is more powerful than I. Will come one who is more powerful than I. Whose sandals I am not fit to carry. Yes. He will baptize you with the Holy Amen. Spirit. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And with fire. And with fire. So this morning's message is that our church in Osak, Osak Christian Tabernacle, needs a baptism with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Amen. And with fire. Hallelujah. Two different experiences. Baptism of the Holy Spirit and with fire. Some people don't believe this baptism of the Holy Spirit, but I believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a different experience. Some people say when you are born again itself, you receive it. No. That is a time when the Holy Spirit starts working in your life. Baptism is when you are completely going to be immersed. 
where the over the overshadowing of the Almighty will come over you. From then on, you will not be the old Psalm. Then you will not be the old Matthew. You will not be the old John or Mary or anyone else, Deborah. You will be a new person because you will be working under the anointing and the overshadowing of the Almighty God. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 When you get up, Monday morning, you start thinking on your own intellect and Sunday morning in the spirit. No. Once you surrender your life into God's hand, start working with the spirit. You will think in the spirit, walk in the spirit, live in the spirit and enjoy in the spirit. Hallelujah. I have quite a few things to tell you, but let me say something very important and I will close with that as our time is running off very fast. You know, I was sharing yesterday in St. Louis, I want to share two, two or three verses which I shared with them and I will close this more, um, message. Uh, shall we turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 9? 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 9 because I know this is going to be a blessing for someone who is here this morning because God told me to uh, repeat that verse again this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 9. Because a great door for empty work has opened to me. Yeah. And there are many who oppose me. There is a great door of effective work that is open for you. Remember, whenever effective work opens and great door opens, there will be many op opposition. Whether it be in Chicago, whether it be in Dallas. When effective work happens with a great door that God has opened, there will be a multitude that will be against Amen. it. Hallelujah. But the great and effective door God has opened for you. Can you say this morning as your testimony, God has opened a great and effective door for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You may have a door open somewhere. See that door op is open somewhere. It doesn't have any meaning unless and until I use that exit. It becomes very meaningful when there is fire here. And then that door is very effective. When God starts moving you to certain things, then the doors are very effective. Others, otherwise, if you're sitting in the room, the doors are useless. That is why some of you have doors already, but they are useless. Praise the Lord. God has opened many doors for people sitting here for ministry, for growing, for empowering. They have attended yearly conferences here. They have heard many speakers from different parts of the world. But it has not become effective because they are still sitting in the room. Unless you start using the door, it doesn't become effective. No, I don't think you have understood. Because that kind of praise the Lord is not effective for this understanding. I will tell you very easily. Even if you have $100 in your pocket, it is not effective unless it comes out of your purse and start moving. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why is currency called currency? Because it has to flow like currents. If it doesn't flow, it is not useful. Current becomes useful only when it flows. Amen. Now, again, you haven't understood. There are two <laughs> types of current. Listen to me very carefully. The first current is called potential energy. In Malayalam, we say Ippa potum. Many ministers are like that. They are waiting to potify. The potential energy, full of energy. But they will never potify. They will never break. The door is open, no effects. We want kinetic energy. You have to move. The current becomes effective only when you move. You have to have an entry point and an exit point. The Holy Spirit will become effective only when you have an entry point and an exit point. That is why God asked me to add this part into the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Many of us have the entry point on Sunday, but there's no exit point on Monday. Oh, good work. <laughs> that is why you are not effective. You want to be effective? You need to have the current flow in your life. Amen. Not come on Sunday, get overfed, and become obese in Christian life, but be fed Amen. and be energetic and be fit in the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you receive, ready receiving that? That you need to get an entry and an exit in your life so that your door become effective. 
Amen. Hallelujah. I will close with uh, uh, two verses. One is Holy, uh, on Holy Spirit. Uh, Galatians chapter 2 verse 8. How many minutes more I have? Five, okay. Because I have no limit for time. Time is not there in heaven, so. Galatians 2 8. Watch was made in India. Yeah. Or in the world, not in heaven. Yeah. So no time in the presence of God. For Galatians 2 8. For he who worked effectively in Peter for the apostleship to the circumcised also worked effectively in me toward the Gentiles. He who works effectively in Peter, who is that? The Spirit of God also worked in me effectively and I will also start working. Holy Spirit is an effective worker and the ones who are filled with the Holy Spirit are effective workers. If you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you have effective work. Product will automatically happen. Efficiency will increase. You don't need any training. You don't need any, anything else. Immediately it will come into action. Amen. Effectiveness of your life will be immediate. That is the flowing experience that God wants in your life. Ephesians 3.7. Ephesians 3.7. I became a servant of this gospel ah. by the gift of God's grace given me ah. through the working of his power. For the effective working of his power, the fullness of God, with no loss of power, <coughs> with no resistance, with a continuous flow, with no block, entry, exit, no block and no resistance, effectively going through your life, then God will use you by the full power that God wants you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3. First Thessalonians. Chapter 2, verse 3. Hallelujah. 1 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 3. For our exhortation did not come from error or uncleanliness. Yes, our exhortation did not come from error or uncleanliness. Or uncleanliness. Nor was it in deceit. Not, nor was it in deceit. But as we have been approved by God yes. to be entrusted with the gospel, yeah. even so we speak. Yeah. Not as pleasing men, no. but God who tests our hearts. Yes, working effectively, not as pleasing men, but according to the word that has been entrusted to it with full extent. The church is not to please anyone. Sunday morning is not to please anyone. It is to work the effective work that God has given you. You are not going to live a life to please people, but please God. By allowing the spirit of God to work in you. And the effectiveness starts in one thing. That's we all, where we all begin. Mm. And that's where we miss. And that is talk, told in James. The effectiveness starts with your prayer life. James chapter 5 verse 16. Many people are not effective because they are not on their knees. Once you increase your prayer life, you are going to be more effective. That is where you receive power and go out every morning. Uh, James chapter 5 verse 16. Confess your faults one to another, pray one to another, yeah. that you may be healed. Ah. Effectual, fervent prayer. Effectual, fervent prayer. What brings healing? Effectual, fervent prayer. What brings miracle? Effectual, fervent prayer. What things happen? What makes things happen in the church? Effectual, fervent prayer. What changes your life? Effectual, fervent prayer. What brings complete change of a nation? Effectual, fervent prayer. So effectiveness starts in prayer and ends in the open door. And I'm sure God has kept many open doors for all of you. It's lying open. Use Amen. it. I will stop with the story which you all, all of you know. Haven't you seen flies going and hitting a closed glass window? and falling down when they have a open window next door. Next, next slot is an open glass. It will not go back like this and reverse and fly a little to the right and fly out. It will jump up every time, hit like this, fall down. Jump up every time, hit like this, fall down. Many Christians are like that. They fight against the closed door when you have an effective open door on the other side. When God closes one door, remember he has opened a bigger door for you on the other side. He is taking you to a greater experience which you have never seen. For a child of God, there is nothing called closed doors. 
because it is only a rerouting to a greater victory. Amen. May God take you to such an experience that your life will become effective and strong by the working of the Holy Spirit. Receive the power, be filled with the Holy Spirit, and wait for the second coming. My Jesus is coming soon. Let us conquer this city. Let us make this church meaningful, effective, and let this church be the active ingredient for this town that we become the salt of this earth. Thank you. God bless you.